in Statistics 1, Chapter 8, Section 2, we will continue our discussion of hypothesis testing. And in this one, it's mostly just interpreting results. So we get results of a test, and then we're going to decide, are we supporting a claim or are we not supporting a claim? So let's take a look at question 11. A certain drug is used to treat asthma. In a clinical trial of the drug, 23 of 284 treated subjects experience headaches based on data from the manufacturer. The accompanying calculator display shows results from a test of the claim that less than 11% of treated subjects experience headaches. Use the normal distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution and assume 0.01 significance level to complete parts A through E. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. Uh, first off, they identified that N, the number of people in the study was 284. And they said X is 23. So we could, we could now we don't have to, but I'm going to show how we could do it. We could calculate the proportion of people who got headaches from this drug by just taking X and dividing it by N. So it'd be 23 divided by 284. Now, the nice thing is they already gave us the answer to that in the print off of, from the calculator. So that number, the proportion of, the, of people who got a headache was about 8%. Okay, so that information could provide us that. What else do we have in this paragraph we can glean information from? So it says that their claim is that less than 11% of treated subjects got a headache. So here's how we would set up the hypothesis test. We would say, we would say the null hypothesis is that the proportion of people getting headaches is equal to 11%. The alternative, HA, is their claim is that the proportion of people who got headaches is less than 11%. And that's their claim. OK, so the first question is, is the test two-tailed, left-tailed, or right-tailed? This question is always related to the null hypothesis, or excuse me, the alternative hypothesis. And if it's a two-tailed test, this alternative would have had to use the not equal to sign. So that would say, I don't know if the proportion's 11. I don't think it is, but I don't know if it's smaller than 11 or bigger than 11%. A left-tailed test uses the less than sign. And a right-tailed test uses the greater than sign. So we just have to match our symbols here. They use less than, so it has to be a left-tailed test. Okay, what is the test statistic? So they're looking for the Z statistic and we can just get it right from the printout. So Z equals negative 1.56 to two decimals, we'll call it negative 1.56. Since this two would just, we would just chuck all those decimals after the two, including the two. What is the P value? Now this is where you have to be a little careful in that they technically gave you two P's here, but P with a hat is the proportion of the sample. So the P we want for this one is this right here, 0 0.059. So to four decimals, we'll call it 0591. Oh, 0591. Okay, what is the null hypothesis and what do you conclude about it? Well, we already wrote that. So we said in the last lesson, we said the null hypothesis always includes equal sign. And they're trying to state that the proportion of people getting headaches from this drug is equal to 11%. So the null would be H0P equals 11. Now, what do you conclude about it? So this also comes from the last lesson. And we said there's two conditions. The p-value is greater than your significance level, alpha, or the p-value 
is less than your significance level alpha. If it's greater than alpha, you fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means you don't have enough evidence to say that the null hypothesis is wrong. Fail to reject H0. If the p-value is less than alpha, that's great evidence against it. So you would reject H0. So we had seen that last lesson, but it's worth boxing and keeping again, because that's going to literally the lesson today is doing this check over and over again, doing it so many times that it just becomes second nature and we don't have to think too much about it. So we have a p-value right here. All we have to do is compare it to alpha in the problem. But what is alpha in the problem? So alpha is always the significance level. And they have put their significance level at 0 0.01. So that is alpha, 0 0.01. So we just have to compare the size of those two numbers. Which one's bigger? So 0 0.05 is bigger than 0 0.01. So the symbol between these two is greater than. So this matches the p-value greater than alpha condition. So in that case, so we're right here at the first one, p-value greater than alpha. So we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we're going to come down here and say, fail to reject the null. So these reject the nulls are gone. We can throw those out. Fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than the significance level alpha. That's exactly right. If your p-value is less than, then you would reject H0, not fail to reject. OK, now this is where students tend to get tripped up. Because if you don't write which claim you have, then this next part's hard to do. So their claim was the alternative. But we are not rejecting the null, which means our evidence is pointing to the null which means we are not going to support their claim. Okay, so that's kind of the tricky part of these problems is, okay, where does the claim sit? And I like to write it in line with whichever it is. We're failing to reject H0, which means we're not supporting this alternative, which means we're not supporting the claim. So let's see which one best states that. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So right away, we are not supporting their claim. So that one's out. There is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. So notice that this is kind of worded strangely, but this is what we're doing. So we are not supporting their claim. So we're actually rejecting the claim that less than 11% of treated subjects experience headaches. Um, so we have to be careful here. We would only use this one if their claim was with the null hypothesis, because then we would reject that claim. So let's see if C says it better. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. This is stated a lot better. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that less than 11% of treated subjects experience headaches. So that one's the right one. There is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. So again, uh, I would only use this one if they had the claim with the null. So this would be the claim as sits with the null hypothesis. We would have used this one if the claim was with the null hypothesis, but it wasn't. Their claim was with the alternative and we are failing to support it. Questions on that one. So these problems, it's mostly about getting that interpretation correct. So let's look at some more. So there's lots of practice in this section. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a strong sense of what is a null hypothesis, what's an alternative, when do we reject, when will we fail to reject, all those things. 12. In a study of the accuracy of fast food drive through orders, one restaurant had 33 orders that were not accurate among 383 orders. So X, the number of things we're interested in is 33. N, the sample size is 383. 
use a 0.05 significance level. So we can immediately write alpha is 0.05 to test the claim that the rate of inaccurate orders is equal to 10%. So their claim lines up with a rate of inaccurate orders, which would be P equal to 0.10. Okay, so to pick the right null and alternative, and just keep note here, they use H1 instead of HA, they're the same thing. So H1 and HA are in, uh, interchangeable. I had stated last time that in this course, the null hypothesis will always use an equal sign. So any of these equal sign ones are okay. This one down here, it did not use an equal sign. You can immediately throw it out. And that's a good habit to get into just to decrease your number of choices for the answer. So it's A, B, or C. Now, for the alternative to be greater than or less than symbol, I should see words like more or greater or less or fewer. If I read this, there's not a single word that indicates greater than, less than, fewer than, more than, things like that. So this is out and this is out. So it has to be just B. So the percentage of inaccurate orders is either 10% or it's not 10%. And the claim, so their claim lines up with the null hypothesis that the proportion is 10%. Okay, now to get the test statistic and the p-value before in the last problem, they had a calculator printout for it. And if you have a, a graphing calculator, many of them have these the tool built in, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with StatCrunch, the tool that's embedded with our homework software. So here is how you would do this problem using StatCrunch to get these two numbers. You'll click question help at the top right of the screen. And then you'll click stack crunch. So you'll load that up. And this is web-based software. So if you have access to the internet, you can all do this. Then you go to stat. And you're going to select proportion stats. You'll, you'll select one sample with summary. And there'll be a box that says number of successes. Now, this is where I said back way back when we first talked about problems like this, where you have number of successes is it can sometimes be a little perverse in that sometimes it's easier to track a bad thing than it is to track a good thing. So oftentimes it's easier to track the number of cancer or the number of COVID infections or the number of bad things than it is to, to track good things. And so we call a success, like in this case, we call a success a bad order. So you go to the restaurant, you don't get an accurate order. In this study, that's considered a success. So the number of successes is just this X number here. So you would type in 33 in this case. Then there's gonna be a box that says number of observations. And in that box, it's your sample size N. So in this one, it's 383. So there are 383 orders. 33 of them were not accurate. Then below this, you'll, you'll set up your hypothesis test. And this is where you have to make it match what we have in the, our answer part, uh, part B here. So you would, all you have to do is type 
So you have to type a number here. So you'll type 0 0.10, 0 0.10. And then you have to select what kind of symbol. So once you select 0.10, it will be auto-generated down here. But then you have to pick which symbol. So is it greater than? Is it less than? Is it not equal to? And you'll just select out of the options not equal to. And then you can just hit compute. And these will be the same steps we use for all the problems today. So once you have them down once, you can refer back to them and you can get all the answers you need for the problems in this section. Okay, now once you hit compute, it's gonna generate a table and there'll be lots of information in it, but there's only two things we need. In the table, there will be a column called ZSTAT and somewhere else in the table, not necessarily next to each other, there'll be a heading called p-value. And, and they give you a lot of decimal points. So in this problem, the z-stat turns out to be minus 0 0.9027. And the p-value turns out to be 0.3667. They want our answers to two decimals. So we'll call this z-stat. So when it asks for test statistic, the test statistic is the Z value here. It's negative 0 0.90. And the P value, self-explanatory P value matches P value here, would be to three decimals 0 And once we have these numbers, now we can do our test. So we know this is the p-value. We have to always compare it against alpha. Alpha in this problem we wrote down, 0.05. And once again, just like the last problem, 0.36 is bigger than 0.05. So it's bigger. If p-value is bigger than alpha from the previous table we generated, you will always fail to reject H zero. So we're failing to reject H zero, which means there's evidence to support the claim because the claim lines up with H zero that the proportion of people getting inaccurate orders at the restaurant is 10%. So let's put that all together. So the next question says, identify the conclusion. Well, we're failing to reject H0, so these reject ones are gone. There is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the rate of inaccurate orders is equal to 10%. So I think that, yeah, that sounds okay. So <clears throat> our claim is on H0. We are, there is not sufficient evidence to reject it. This is where it gets a little double negative-y. So we, can't, we don't say we accept it. We just say there's not sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the rate of inaccurate orders is equal to 10%. Okay, last question here. Does the, does the accuracy rate appear to be acceptable? Since there is not sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the rate of inaccurate orders is equal to 10%, the restaurant should work to higher that rate. Well, why would you want to increase your rate of inaccurate orders, right? So that doesn't make sense. Since there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the rate of inaccurate orders, so we didn't reject that. So uh, we didn't reject. Since there's not sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the rate of inaccurate orders is equal to 10%, it is plausible that the inaccuracy rate is 10%. So, so far, so good. That's all true. This rate would be too high. The restaurant should work to lower the rate. Um, is it too high? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So let's see if D is better. Since there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim, well, we didn't reject the claim. So it has to be C. Although, you know, you might want to think, is 10% too high? Maybe it is. 
So they can try to work to, to decrease it. Uh, what was that? 11. Okay, 13. Suppose that in a random selection of 100 colored candies, 20%, 27% of them are blue. The candy company claims that the percentage of, the, of blue candies is equal to 29%. So they're claiming P, the percentage of blue, is equal to 0.29. Use a 0.01 significance, so that's alpha, to test that claim. So once again, the null always uses an equal sign. So we can again throw out D because they did not use an equal sign for the first part. <laughs> Now, to pick between A, B, and C, we have to look for words like more than, less than, greater than. So let's read it again. Suppose in a random selection of 100 color candies, 20%, 7% of them are blue. The company, the candy company claims that the percentage of blue candies is equal to 29%. So notice there's no word that says more than, greater than, less than, fewer than. So less than is out, greater than is out. It has to be B. So this one's pretty close to the last one. And their claim lines up with H0 that it is 29% blue. Candy's in the bag. <clears throat> now, in this one, they gave you N, the number of total candies, 100. But be careful. The last problem, they gave you X. In this problem, they did not give you X. They gave you P hat, the proportion of blue candies. So p hat is x over n. They gave you p hat, 0.27. They gave you n, which is 100. They did not tell us x, which is the number of blue candies in this particular bag. So to solve for x, <clears throat> you multiply both sides by 100. And you'll just jump the decimal two to the right. And you'll get, there were 27 blue candies in this bag of 100. Now with this and B, so using this information of X and N and this hypothesis test, you'll use the same steps as 12. So you'll load this up in StatCrunch. You'll tell it X is 27. Number of observations is 100. You'll put 0.29 in the box. You'll select not equal to sign. You'll hit compute and it will produce. <clears throat> so from this, you'll go to StatCrunch. And then StatCrunch will give you these two values. This will be the Z stat. This will be the P value from the table that it outputs. And after you round to two decimals here and three decimals here, you should get, for my numbers anyway, 0.44, negative 0.44, and 0.659. We haven't done anything with the test statistic yet, but we will. So we've been recording this number and we haven't been looking at what it means. Eventually, we will use that number. OK, so the next step always is to compare your p-value to the alpha that they decided in the problem. So their alpha was 0.01. The p-value was 0.65. That's clearly bigger than 0.01. So once again, we are failing to reject the null a zero. So anytime this number is bigger than this number, P greater than alpha, you fail to reject H zero. Their claim is with H zero and we are failing to reject it. So we are going to have, so we're failing to re reject H zero so we can get rid of B and D 
fail to reject a zero, there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the percentage of blue candies is equal 29. So that's stated perfectly. If we're not rejecting a zero, then we're not rejecting the claim. Okay, 14, in a study of 806 randomly selected medical malpractice lawsuits, so that's N, it was found that 483 of them were dropped or dismissed, so that's X, use a 0.01 significance, so that's alpha, to test the claim that most medical malpractice lawsuits are dropped or dismissed. So when we say most, that's greater than. So our null hypothesis should be, well, the proportion of, they didn't give us any percentages here. So when they don't give you percentages, you pretty much assume that the null is that the proportion of whatever we're looking at is equal to 50%. So you basically assume 50-50. But besides that, like I said, if the null H0 does not have an equal sign, it's wrong. So let's throw that one out. B and F. So we can get rid of three of these six options right off, right off the bat. And then we said that most medical malpractice, so their claim is that most, which is greater than, so the alternative has to have P greater than 50%. And that is also their claim. So we just have to find the one that matches that, and it should be C. And their claim lines up with the alternative hypothesis. So once again, in this one, we know N, we know X, we know the hypothesis test. So again, same steps as 12. for StatCrunch to give us the answers. And in this one, the answers will be a Z-score of 5.64, a p-value of 0 0.000, very small number. So once again, once we have these numbers, the next step is always compare your p-value to alpha. Alpha was 0 0.01. And I think this is the first case where we've seen the p-value is smaller than alpha. If your p-value is smaller, less than alpha, then you do reject H0. So we are going to reject this proportion of 50%. We are rejecting that, which means we are going to support H, the alternative. We're going to support this one. So let's see the best way to state that. Reject the null. So these ones that say fail to reject the null are wrong. Fail to reject. So we're down to A and C. Reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than. So if p-value is greater than, you don't reject the null. Reject the null because the p-value is less than significance level alpha. That's right. What is the final conclusion? Okay, so this is where we have to take in consideration their claim and everything. Fortunately, I can't show it all on one screen. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that most medical malpractice lawsuits are dropped or dismissed. So we are supporting their claim. So not sufficient evidence, that's not true. 
there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. Well, that would be if the claim was the null hypothesis. Uh, so that one is not quite true either. There is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. No, we're not rejecting the claim. It has to be D. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that most medical malpractice lawsuits are dropped or dismissed. So we are supporting that claim, support claim. So you're looking for support claim. Like I said, if we do enough of these, it should sink in because we're only, really what we're doing is just comparing the size of two numbers. And once we have that, then we should be able to make conclusions about it. 15, consider a drug testing company that provides a test for marijuana use among 269 tested subjects, that's N. Results from 30 subjects were wrong, so that's X either a false positive or false negative, use 0.10 significance, so that's alpha, to test the claim that less than 10% of the test results are wrong. So they want the less than symbol. So again, the null hypothesis always has to use an equal sign. So we can use that to eliminate C right away. And we know that the second symbol should be less than, so this greater than is gone and this not equal is gone. It has to be D. So they want a less than symbol. And that is their claim. Okay, so this will be again, the same stat crunch steps as 12. So you'll run this through stat crunch and get these two answers down here. For the test statistic and this one, I got 0 0.63 and the p-value was 0 0.736. And we're gonna compare that to the alpha of 0.10. And this one is clearly bigger than 0.10. Whenever your p-value is greater than alpha, you always fail to reject the null hypothesis. So if we're failing to reject H0, that means we are staying here, which means we're not supporting this one. So if we're staying with this one, we're not going to support the alternative. We're not going to support their claim. So let's get the best wording for that. We are not rejecting H0, so we can throw out A and D. Fail to reject H0. There is sufficient evidence to warrant support of the claim. Well, we are not supporting their claim, so that's wrong. Fail to reject H0. There is not sufficient evidence to warrant support of the claim. So we are not supporting the claim. And so it's probably closer to 10% are false tests and not less than that for the drug test. Any questions about the procedure here? It's kind of just, lots of practice. So use a little bit of technology to get the numbers and then interpret the numbers. And then we can decide, uh, does, our, does our experiment give evidence to support a claim or not? Sixteen. A genetic experiment involving peas yielded one sample of offspring consisting of 440 green and 173 yellow. So we've seen this problem several times. Uh, to try to figure out the proportion of recessive and dominant gene situation. 
use a 0.01 significance to test the claim that under the same circumstances, 27% of offspring trees will be yellow. Identify the null and do all the tests. Okay. Now, the only trick to this one is they have given you X, the number of yellow peas, but they did not give you N, the total number of peas. So N, the total number of peas, is the green and the yellow added together. And so in this problem, you should get 613. So that's the only trick to this one is you have to be careful. Um, the total number of observation is these two numbers added together. That's your N. X is this number. Then you can plug that into stack crunch and, and go from there. Okay, their claim is that the claim is that you will get 27% yellow. So they're basically saying that P is equal to 0.27. So their claim is that P is equal to 0.27. Well, we already said the equal to sign always goes with H0. The alternative then is that P something 20. So these numbers always match. These symbols always match. The question is, did, I see, did we see a less than, greater than, some word up here? to indicate an inequality. So use a claim that there will be 27. So there is no wording here that would indicate greater than, less than. So the, our only other option is not equal. So we think the proportion of yellow peas is 27%. It could be smaller, it could be bigger. So the one that gets us to these symbols is C. And their claim lined up with the null. Okay, so if you run 173, 613, and this through stat crunch, you should get a Z statistic of negative 3.17 and a p value of 0 0.0016. Be careful, they want you to go to four decimals in this problem. The alpha was 0.01. So we compare this number here to 0 0.01. <clears throat> 0 0.001 is less than 0 0.01. So two zeros and a one is smaller than one zero and a one. So this is now the second instance of, if your p-value is less than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. So we are going to reject the null and their claim, and we're going to support the alternative. So let's look for wording for that. So first off, we're rejecting. So these fail to rejects are gone. Reject the null because the p-value is greater than the significant. So if p-value is greater than alpha, then we would fail to reject. Reject the null, p-value less than alpha. When they're stated like that, those problems are easy because these, this is always the way it should read. Reject the null, p less than alpha. The trickier part is getting the claim right. So what's our final conclusion? Well, we're rejecting the null, which is their claim. So we're rejecting the claim and supporting the alternative. So let's see which one states that best. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim. No, nope, we rejected the claim. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that less than 27. So the claim was not that there was less than 27. There is sufficient evidence to warrant Rejection of the claim that 27% offspring peas will be yellow. So that is the best one. We have evidence to reject the claim. We're rejecting the claim.
And I just realized I was looking at the wrong numbers for this one. So I apologize. These are actually the numbers for 17, not 16. So these numbers were 0 0.68, And the p-value in this one was 0.4956. And now we see that, uh, let's write this over here where it's clean. Our p-value 0 0.4956, alpha 0 0.01. Now we see that this p-value is bigger than 0 0.01. If it's bigger, we fail to reject. So all of our answers here are gonna be reversed. We're failing to reject the null because the p-value is greater than the significance level. So it should be B. So we're failing to reject now, which means these rejects are actually wrong. Now, if the claim was, if the claim was the null and we're failing to reject it, then we are actually supporting the claim. So the last step would be, Uh, there is not sufficient evidence to reject the claim that 27% of the P's will be yellow. So we are not rejecting the claim. Okay, my apologies there. Looking at the wrong one. But that should actually make 17 easy because we already did the analysis. So 17, we've also seen this problem again So uh, before. In a study of 420,000 cell phone users, so that's N, 105 developed cancer of the brain, so that's X. Test the claim of a somewhat common belief that such cancers are affected by cell phone use. That is, test the claim that cell phone users develop cancer of the brain and nervous system at a rate that is different from. The words different from are not saying more than or less than, so it's not equal to. The rate of 0.034% for people who do not use cell phones. Because this issue has such great importance, use an alpha of 0 0.001. So that's the smallest alpha we've seen yet. Zero, zero, 001. Identify the null hypothesis alternative, et cetera. So again, the null always uses an equal sign. So this one's wrong. This one's wrong. This one's wrong. And we've determined that the other symbol should be not equal sign because there's no indication of less than or greater than. So the best answer would be E. The proportion of cancer cell phone rates, cancer and cell phone users is 0.034%, or it's not that. And their claim the claim is the alternative that it's different than that 0.034%. Okay, now in this one, using stat crunch, the Z was minus 3.17. The p-value is 0 0.0016, and we already did this, but we had a different alpha. So let's use the alpha in this problem, 0 0.001, and this one's real close. So look, 0 0.0016 is slightly bigger than 0 0.001. So this is still bigger. If your p-value is bigger than alpha, you always fail to 
reject H0. So we are not rejecting this. We are staying here, which means we are not supporting the claim. So notice if we use the alpha from the last problem, we did reject. So it all does depend on this alpha value. A really small one like this will be hard to, to reject. So what do we conclude? We're failing to reject. So we can eliminate B and C. It's the nice thing about these problems. If you get this analysis correct, you can always eliminate two of the four answers. Because the p-value is less than, no, is because the p-value is greater than alpha. What's our conclusion? Well, we're failing to reject the null, which means we're not supporting the alternative, which means we're not supporting their claim. There is sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. So that would only, we would only state that if their claim was the null, which it wasn't. There is not, su there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. That looks good. That cell phone users develop cancer of the brain and nervous system at a rate that is different. So B is the best one right away. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim. We are not supporting the claim. There's not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim again. You'd use that one if the claim was the null. Okay, lots of practice. Last one with um, numbers. An online poll asks, do you believe the Loch Ness Monster exists? Among 21,000 responses, 62% were yes. So this is N. Now this is one where you have to be careful. They gave you P hat, 62%. So to get X, which you're gonna need for the stack crunch, it's gonna be this 62%, 0. 0.62 times N, 21,912. And the X you're going to need for stat crunch, for my problem anyway, was 13,585. So I can use this and the N into stat crunch to get my numbers. Use a 0.05 significance. So down here next to the P value, we can write alpha as 0.05. So we can do our test. Their claim is that most people, so again, that's going to be greater than symbol. So the two symbols we need are equal and greater than, so it has to be A. And their claim is most, so their claim lines up with the greater than symbol. From stat crunch, you should get a Z score of 35.52 and a z-score of 0, 0.000. 0, 0.000 is clearly less than 0.05. If your p is less than alpha, you always reject H0. So we are going to reject this one, which means we are going to support their claim. And C and D are both fail to reject, so those are gone. So our two possible answers are just A and B. Reject H0, there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. Well, we are reject, well, we're, the claim wasn't H0, so we're not rejecting H0. There is sufficient evidence, we're supporting the claim because it's in the alter, it's the alternative position. How is the conclusion affected by the fact that internet users who saw the question could decide whether to respond? 
So this is one of those classic examples of a voluntary response sample. And I had said from chapter two all the way back that voluntary response samples are a very bad way to get information. So the conclusion is probably not valid. So this is where, yeah, you can do the math, but it might be garbage. Okay, we just have a minute, but the last two are our vocab ones, so let's get them quick. Which of the following is not a requirement of testing a claim about a population pro proportion? Samples are simple random. We always like that. We need the conditional for binomial. Yep. N, P, and N, Q. Yep. So we had talked about that when we talked about binomial. So the only one is A. That one's not right. Which of the following is not true about testing a claim about a proportion? So both the traditional method and p-value method, I haven't taught the traditional method yet. We will teach that next class, but I'll just say that these are the same thing. P-value method and traditional method are the same, that's true. When testing claims about proportion, the traditional method and p-value method are equivalent, yeah, that's also true. If you want to test the claim about population proportion, use the p-value method or the class. I mean, these are all saying the exact same thing. So the only one that's not is D. A conclusion based on a common central estimate will be the same as a conclusion based on hypothesis. That's false. And we haven't taught confidence interval method yet, but we will. And that will conclude 8.2.